Hi everyone, welcome to Paw Paw's Workshop. You know the absolute best time that I spend in my shop is with my grandkids. And today's project is one that my grandkids asked me to help with. And he got to do the work and I did very little. So let's get started with this box that he made as a gift for his girlfriend. Let's get started. To do this project today, my grandson brought over a 1x4 that was about 3 feet long to be able to make this jewelry box for his girlfriend. So the first thing I had to do is be able to resaw this and get it to a thinner stock and so that there would be enough material as well because he really didn't have any idea just how much material it would take to be able to do this box. But by resawing it, and making two pieces that were thinner, it was going to be perfect. So after several cuts through the table saw, we had it split in the two sections. The safest way to do this is to take several different passes on each side and then just flip the material over. And that last cut should be a very thin, small cut so it does not put any extra pressure onto the board at all. So this is my last run through to be able to split the two boards in half. I'm only cutting probably about a quarter inch worth of material. And there we have the two halves separated with minimal sanding that's going to be required. And to make it just a little bit easier, I did take it over to the planer and I ran it through the planer one time just to make sure that the two pieces were exactly the same thickness. So after running it through the planer, it was time for just a little bit of touch-up sanding that was necessary to make sure that it was nice, smooth, and it looked great. Now one thing I want to point out that I don't even think he realizes is that here he is, he's right-handed, and he's sanding, and then all of a sudden he switches over and becomes left-handed. He's a true grandson. I know I do that all the time without thinking about it, and here he's following in my footsteps, and I know he doesn't realize it either. <laughs> so I'll never tell. I'm just going to keep that secret to myself unless he watches this video. Now, a close inspection to make sure that it's totally smooth and it looks good. And yes, he is. He's looking at it very close to make sure that it is perfect as he can get it. I came by real quick to check to see how he's doing because I've got several projects going on in the shop at the same time. And sure enough, it is looking great. He is doing a fantastic job. Now he decided he wanted to cut the sides of the box at the 45 degrees. So that's what we did. We went ahead and I set up the table saw so that the blade was at 45 degrees and I went ahead and cut these angles for him. The box itself is seven inches by five inches by the three and a half inches tall. With the four pieces cut, it was time to be able to assemble it and the test fit to make sure everything was going to work well. And here he's trying to lay it out to see exactly how it's going to go together. So he's got the pieces laid out in the correct order and now we're going to use the tape to be able to hold the edges together and put the glue on it so that we can fold it into the box shape. So I'm just going to show him real quick how we're going to do that. And we're just going to put the tape underneath. And I'm going to do the first one for him and let him go ahead and do it. No better way to learn than actually doing it. So it takes just a moment for him to kind of get the hang of it and then the rest of it goes real easy. And he positions that piece directly into the exact spot that it needs to be. And he's taken great care to be able to make sure that it's done right. And I'm proud of him for that. The yellow straight edge actually was there to make sure that the pieces were completely straight as he glued them together. So now we're just going to apply the glue and from there assemble the box and tape it again to be able to secure it. Now I slip in the paper towels next to him because he's getting ready to knead it, putting the glue onto these joints. 
Now, after he gets the glue on the first one, I gotta, of course, show him my famous technique on getting the fingers right down into the glue and smoothing everything out and spreading the glue even on the joint. <laughs> I think the fingers are the best way to do it. And I know some of you guys out there are going to laugh and say, ah, oh, there's better ways. But I've been using the finger to spread the glue for many, many years. Might as well teach the grandsons the same thing. And now it was time just to assemble the box. So I helped him out, showed him how we were going to fold it together, and bring the joints right up together, and then he's going to tape it in place to be able to secure it. And that gives a nice tight joint. Can't beat that at all. So with me holding it in place, he went ahead and put the tape on it. After taking a moment to wipe up the excess glue, we just checked it for square and made sure that everything was aligned exactly the way it needed to be. And at one tape, I needed to be able to adjust to get it a little bit tighter. But now it's good and square and we just gotta wait for the glue to dry. Now while the box was drying, it was time to be able to go ahead and make the bottom and the top. And we did this by cutting two pieces of wood and joining them together to form the bottom and the same thing for the top. And we just edge joined them together and put the tape on them to hold them in place. And it's great to see him doing all the work. And I'm doing the absolute minimum to assist in just giving him an extra set of hands when needed. The next thing that he decided he wanted to do was to add the Celtic cross to the top on the lid. And to do this, he went to Google, found an image, and sent that image over to me. Now, I have to say, it was not a very good image. So from that standpoint, I had to take that into Inkscape and be able to do the trace bitmap there and be able to sharpen up the image so that I could actually carve it. After the glue dried, it went back to the sanding, make sure that everything was nice and smooth again. This is a look of the image, and you can see that it was rather grainy, and it had some uh, gray into the middle of it that I didn't want. So I just went ahead and brought it into Inkscape, and from there did the trace bitmap, cleaned it up a little bit, saved it as an SVG file, and from there, was able to bring it into the easel to be able to carve. Once imported into easel, we went ahead and just sized it down to the size that would fit onto the lid, and we did do a test carve just to see how it was going to carve with the image, and it actually did surprisingly well without having to do any additional cleanup on the image at all. So all in all, it was a good choice and it worked out really, really well. If you remember back at the beginning of the video, I said he was planning on painting this box. Well, he changed his mind and we ended up staining it. He also was going to paint the Celtic cross a specific color, but with the contrast between the natural wood and the staining, we decided to leave it just as it was because it turned out really, really pretty. The carving did not take long to do, and I think you would have to agree that it really turned out very nice and sharp, and I like the choice that he made. Good job. And here's the finished jewelry box that he made, and I can tell you he is definitely very proud of his accomplishment, because after all, he did 99% of the work. And just so you can see, I want to give a little bit of a close-up of the job that he did. Great job. Hi, everyone. Thank you for watching my video today. If you like the video, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button down below and the little bell next to it so you'll be notified on the different videos that I upload. Also, check out the videos over here to be able to stay up to date on the happenings in my shop. So again, thank you for watching my videos.